Breaking news today. World War III. Is London safe? Why our capital must urgently adapt? Londoners are living in constant terror, knowing that their city could be attacked by an enemy from another country at any second, all because a Russian tyrant is showing his teeth against the West. Putin threatened Britain with serious consequences last year during an angry tirade in which he alleged that Britain's elite troops were interfering with his nuclear power reactors. The capital was terrified by the threat, which came from a nation. Known for its nuclear weapons and its army of well trained soldiers, even more so, Putin would likely make London, one of Europe's most populous cities and home to 13% of the UK's total population, a top target. The United Kingdom has been threatened before by foreign powers. In the 1940s, when Nazi Germany was attacking, the nation came together in the now famous Blitz spirit, and when the Cold War rolled around, it braced itself for covert conflict. The United Kingdom has faced many of the same dangers during the last century, but it has also faced many new challenges, such as cyber attacks, increased armament, and the nebulous field of artificial intelligence. Here are some of the dangers that London would have to deal with if Putin followed through on his promises. As we confront an uncertain future, World War III broke out. It would not be strange to see missiles delivered to London from Russia, given their employment of missiles in Ukraine. However, Londoners shouldn't give in to the temptation to seek refuge in the city's many underground stations. Many of these are dangerously near to the ground and could cause more casualties if you are in a tube station and hit directly. Let's face it you are f asterisk 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 ed, says Nick Cooper, author of London. Underground at war, a T will collapse in on itself and crush everyone within the stations because they are built from bricks and concrete. As demonstrated in 1940, when 67 people lost their lives when a bomb destroyed Balham Station, anyone seeking refuge in tube stations close to waterworks run the danger of drowning, in addition to the bunker and bomb crater. The nearby sewer system was also flooded, the Circle, District, and Hammersmith lines, among others, run in the open and are therefore completely useless as shelters, while some stations are located only 5 meters below ground, the station at Hampstead descends 58.5 meters below ground, therefore Mr. Cooper would rush there in the event of an impending bomb threat, Anderson shelters, which were iron structures placed in people's gardens during World War II are the most effective means of defense against aerial bombs, nevertheless, the government should provide assistance to households in constructing these shelters, Anderson. Shelters, according to Mr. Cooper, bend rather than shatter when hit because they are iron. Operation Pied Piper was the World War II program that helped remove over 3 million children from places like London in order to shield them from air raids, however, Londoners would likely not be urged to flee the city in the event that the United Kingdom were to become involved in another conflict children and adults alike would be incentivized to remain in the city, if for no other reason than to keep the wheels of commerce turning and to prevent the UK as a whole from becoming overrun with. Migrants, history professor Dr. Martin Farr of Newcastle University explains that during the aerial bombing of the 1940s, it was prudent to transfer young people to the countryside despite the nuclear danger in the 1980s. No state-sponsored evacuations took place. During the Cold War, no major cities outside of London were evacuated. Stock photo by Getty Images Actually, individuals were being urged to remain indoors and seek refuge in the cabinet beneath the staircase. Major services must be open to keep Britain running thus keeping the city functioning will also be a significant priority for the administration. Though there is a great deal of government and financial activity in London, even things like transportation and manufacturing simply must continue, Mr. Cooper remarks. Keeping Londoners going about their normal routine was so important during the First and Second World Wars because officials didn't want people to be scared to go about their lives in the city. Food rationing Since the public has already experienced rationing during the COVID-19 epidemic, its reinstatement is quite probable. Supermarket shelves were bare of necessities like toilet paper, canned goods, and dried pasta as a result of the unexpected need to stock up, prompting chains to impose limits on consumers' ability to purchase certain quantities at once. Because no one knew what was going on in the lead-up and during lockdown, people's tendency was to stockpile, according to DR. 
FAR, during the war, rationing booklets were distributed to the public in an effort to control food intake and ensure that everyone had enough, however, the United Kingdom is even more vulnerable to new conflicts since we have been less able to produce our own resources, particularly food, since the 1940s. People could starve to death if we are blockaded, Dr. Farr warns, during previous conflicts, it was strongly advised that everyone cultivate their own veggies and ensure that no part of their garden was wasted. However, our level of self-sufficiency has declined, and in the event of a conflict, the government will have to emphasize the importance of preserving all resources. Modern technological hacks like the one that hit the British Library's database last year and the one that North Korea did to the NHS in 2017 show how susceptible the UK is to cyber assaults. The National Cyber Security Center has implicated Russia in an operation that targeted a communications provider utilized by the Ukrainian military in the hours leading up to the invasion of the country in February 2022, demonstrating Russia's penchant for incorporating cyber attacks into its battles, and the event of a power outage, Britons should have candles and portable radios on hand. Getty Image the people of the United Kingdom have just been informed that our dependence on technology and smartphones may ultimately bring about our demise, and December, Britain was even advised by Deputy Prime Minister Oliver Dowden to prepare for the possibility of a power outage by storing candles and radios powered by batteries. The government is testing an emergency alert on our phones that might replace traditional air raid sirens, which is something we're currently dependent on during. Wartime, as Dr. Farr explains, when lines of communication go down, what happens next? It will greatly impair our ability to communicate and acquire news, people should consider purchasing warm-up radios and newspapers more frequently in order to wean themselves off of their reliance on these things, because we even use them to pay for things.